The Run Crew series continues with Seattle Base Chasing Roses Run Club. Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Runway Podcast. I am your host, Kim. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the show. If you are a return listener, welcome back to the show. I truly appreciate you tuning into the show week after week. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to the show. Pause this episode right now. Look at your phone hit that subscribe button so you can be notified each and every time I upload a new episode. For the month of April, I am continuing with the Run Crew series. Now, the purpose of this series is to just introduce you to different Run Crews throughout the United States and the world. So if and when we get back to normal traveling, if you have to travel for business, for leisure, for whatever, you go to these different cities and you can link up with these run crews so you are never running alone wherever you are. I was searching far and wide for run crews on the West Coast and let me tell you, they are very hard to come by. (laughs) But I finally found a couple of West Coast run crews and this one was They're not so new, but a little bit new because they're just getting really active again, you know, especially during the pandemic. But I found this crew, Chasing Roses Run Club. They were originally based in Oregon, but the founder moved to Seattle. So now they are a Seattle-based run club and they have runners all over the states who run with them virtually as well. So get to know this Seattle Run Club right now. Welcome, Gary and Tunde to the Runway Podcast. Welcome, gentlemen. Appreciate you. Appreciate you having us. Of course. Now, Gary is one of the event coordinators for the club, and Tunde is the founder of Chasing Roses Run Club. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) First, tell me a little bit about yourselves. You go first, Tunde. Where are you originally from? Uh, I'm originally from the DMV area, uh, Maryland. DC area, born in DC, grew up in Maryland. Um, I currently live in uh, Seattle, Washington. It's a long way away from home. Mm-hmm. Um, I am, how old am I? I'm 39. I'll be 40 in like uh, a couple months in September. And uh, okay. yeah, that, that's me. Now, what is the origin of your name? Because I know you, your your oh. background has to be from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, both my parents emigrated to D.C. Um, from Nigeria, Lagos, um, okay. back in the mid, late 70s. So Nice. So they've been in the, the States for a long while. Oh, yeah, a long time. They'll probably never go back, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they miss it, but <laughs> So what city are you currently residing in? Uh, Seattle. Seattle. Um, Seattle? Yeah, from from D.C. to a bunch of other places, and then Portland, and then Seattle. Okay. And how do you make your coins? What do you do for a living? I am a biology professor. So I teach, um, like, um, molecular biology, general micro anatomy physiology. Really? Uh, yeah. I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> wow so you're one of the smart ones huh uh, yeah i tried that brother's I real intelligent uh, i know he fronting right yeah mm-hmm. I, I can see what listen i you just impressed me tremendously as a college <laughs> professor wow so professor is that on the college level yeah mm-hmm. so you're 39 teaching college kids yeah i yeah, love it i've been teaching for like uh four years Four years now, yeah. Wow. My professors did not look like you when I was in college. Mm -mm. (laughs) (laughs) Not at all. They were old, wrinkly, and... mm. (laughs) Yeah, I had had a couple young professors, but most of them were old. (laughs) Things have changed. Wow, okay. All right, I'm not mad at you. What about you, Gary? Where are you? (laughs) Wow. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm originally from the uh, Bay Area, California. I uh, grew up in Sacramento, though, so I uh, went to high school out here. Uh, went to HBCU for two years, and then I ultimately graduated from Cal State LA. And uh, now, most recently, I just moved back to California, actually. I was living in, for work, I traveled, what, to five states in the last six years for work. So now I'm back in California, back home. So it's a, it's a big change, but I like feeling being back home with family and everything. So that's where I'm at now. Wow. So were you in Seattle at one point as well? I was, yeah. So I just left Seattle uh, in the middle of January of this year. So I was in Seattle for about a year and a half. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, what what is it like in Seattle? My sister moved there like a few years ago, but she's like the only black person that I know in Seattle. I and now <laughs> I know the two of y'all, so that's three. <laughs> so, yeah, what's Seattle like? I'll be honest with you. It's a little jewel. It's a jewel. You know, a lot of people, you know, say it's not fun and this, that, and the other. But, I mean, when you, uh, you know, we're both, uh, uh, Tunde is my fraternity brother, so that's how we know each other. And then uh, from there, just personality-wise, if you can get out and mix and mingle, Seattle got a lot to offer. Then I like outdoor stuff, so I like going hiking and being on the water, stuff like that. So, And then food, so, you know, food is always a plus. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love the yeah. food. I, I always ask people that I interview in other states, like, what is the food scene like? Because that's the first place I'm hitting when I land mm -hmm. somewhere. So, yeah, I got to mm -hmm. gotta stuff my face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what are you doing out there in Cali? What do you do for work that has you traveling all over the place? Uh, so I work for Milwaukee Power Tools. I manage uh, 10 states and number of people. And uh, basically, we do business-to-business -business sales. So uh, Power Tool Company, we, we sell to a number of different companies and different things like that. So currently right now I control the Western division of uh, our Granger business. So that, that has me, has my calendar pretty booked up. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's a great thing though. I, you know, I'm a substituted in, uh, man, but you know, ha having my <laughs> brothers in the, uh, in the group keeping holding me accountable to get on these miles. So that's yeah. a big thing. That's good. So you've been traveling like during COVID the entire time. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, so we were pretty much uh, remote working for the last year. So I just started traveling again. Let's see, I moved in January, and I think I've been on almost 30, 30 trips so far. What? Yeah. So In four months? Yeah. Hey, work is calling. Wow. <laughs> wow. Are you, like, driving, or are you, like, flying all over? Uh, no, I fly. Yeah, if it's anything over two hours, I'm flying. So what's your airline miles looking like, you know? Oh, man, they healthy. The world they open it back up. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they look real good. They look real good. What's your status? Good. What's your, I'm about to get you a piece of ticket, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's good. It's good. So it's when did good. you start running? What's your running journey look like? Man, uh, real life, like running like this probably happened during the pandemic. I'll be honest with you. I played football majority of my life, so. Most of our running was conditioning, quick sprints, and everything like that. So pandemic start or hit, and all the gyms were closed and everything like that. And I know Tunde's been doing this for a while, and uh, he presented – or somebody else presented the idea of the uh, Portland uh, Half Marathon. So we, we started beginning training for that on top of the gyms being closed. So we just I just kind of stuck with it. So uh, uh, a long-distance runner, I would say the last year – and other than that, it's always been just uh, sprinting and different things like that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Tunde? When did you get started running? Uh, sophomore year of high school, maybe. So I I got into it because I coached. I played basketball in high school, um, mm -hmm. and our coach made us run cross country to kind of condition for our season because we did like a lot of uh, a lot of uh, pressing defense where we just all over the court. So he wanted us to be more conditioned than the other team. So I started running then. Uh, so I ran cross country in, co in high school. I thought about it in college. I could have, but I didn't because I wanted to have more fun with my friends. And uh, then I took off running for about a decade. And then in 2014, I, after playing basketball, I had a really bad uh, injury to my hand. We had to have like surgery. And I couldn't like lift weights. I couldn't play basketball. So the only thing I could do was run. Mm -hmm. So um, got back into running, training for the 2015 Miami um, half marathon, and then mm -hmm. been running ever since. 
So. Wow. So were you like mean and you hated that you were forced to run cross country? Uh, at first, yeah. Like my first time going out for cross country, um, it was a Friday. And I'm happy because it was a Friday because the next day, if I had to go to school that next day, I would have quit because <laughs> I laid in bed all day Saturday. <laughs> I was like, ah, this ain't it. This ain't it. <laughs> for real. Because my coach made me run cross country. So I just wanted to run indoor and outdoor track. But he's like, no, if you want to run indoor and outdoor, you have to do cross country too. But cross country like builds you. Like you hate mm-hmm. it at first, but then after a while, it's like, all right, this isn't yeah. so bad. So how did you transition into long distance running? Um, I guess, I don't know. Um, okay, so when I first started back running, uh, like after I broke my finger, I couldn't run a mile without stopping. Like I would run, I'm like, oh my God, my back hurts. I can't breathe. <laughs> and then I was just like, this is the only thing I have to like, um, to keep active. So mm-hmm. I would like run a mile and stop like five times in that mile. And then I would just keep at it and keep at it. And then gradually I was, you know, I kept imagining, okay, we have Miami marathon uh, coming up. Just think about how warm and sunny it's going to be. And that's all that kept me going. And then after that, I said, I'm never doing another half marathon again. <laughs> and that was in 20, that was in 2015. And I've done a lot. How many have you done since? Uh, officially, um, mm-hmm. 17, I think. Okay. Yeah. Unofficially, I don't know how many. <laughs> okay. So. Have you ventured into marathoning yet? Yes. yes. Uh, I've done two. I did, um, I did Seattle Marathon in 2018, and then <coughs> I did the Chicago in 2019. Okay. So How'd you like those? Chicago? It was flat, and I didn't. I don't like that. I don't no? like that. It's too. It's too flat. Like, for a half marathon, that's cool. For a full marathon, just completely flat is is that's not it. Because it's it's a lot of repetition, and you know, um, like my hamstrings were just getting worked, and I was just like, uh, no, nah, I don't like it. <laughs> I need so you need to come this. run a New York City marathon then. Uh, maybe that's too mm-hmm. much. If, if, you, if, that, if that's too flat, if you need a challenge, come on over to New York City. We, we got some bridges you can run I over, mean, some two-mile bridges. We, we got something for you. I mean, I, I am going to run it because my goal is to do the world majors, but I am, at one point, I am going to run it. Okay. So how was, um, what Seattle did you do, rock and roll? No, just the just Seattle Marathon. Oh, we Seattle have, um, has a marathon. Do they have mm-hmm. a half too? Yep. Half and full. Okay. Because I'm usually, looking for... Uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Oh. Because I was signed up to run Rock and Roll's um, Seattle. And, you know, they can't... I'm, I'm done with Rock and Roll. So I need a new Seattle mm-hmm. race to run. So I didn't know you guys had your own marathon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a nice medal too. I'm putting that, I'm putting that <laughs> on my notepad. Wait, wait. How, how's the course? Tell me how's the course first before I sign up. Uh, he just told you he likes heels, so. I know. <laughs> there's, there's some is heels it, in is there. it hilly? Uh, it's it's hilly, but it's not as bad as New York is. The hills are towards the end. Which I don't. Well, know look, New York. Bad. New York isn't bad. It's it's just a challenge. Right, because when you start yeah. out, you're on a, a a bridge, a Verrazano bridge, and you run mm-hmm. like one mile uphill at the start of the race, and then it's just mm-hmm. like it's it's up and down. It's a challenge, but it's it's a good challenge because you have the crowd there, they're cheering you on like for the whole 26 miles. It's dope. Yeah, if you can run New York City, you add it to your list. <laughs> you run anywhere. Let me think. See, I've never done Boston. I did Chicago. I did um, Berlin. You probably wouldn't like Berlin either. It's pretty flat as well. Right. I signed yeah. up for Berlin last year and didn't get in. So, not last year. Year Try before again. that. Oh, I'll Try when the world always back up. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it, it's flat. I say it's it's comparable to Chicago. So you might probably might not like that one either. Oh, okay. And okay. Berlin is not the best city to go to either. So. <laughs> Let me not suck you out of Berlin. Do, do your majors. 
Do, hey, do they have good food and good beer? <laughs> well, the beer is probably, if you go, well, um, when is the Berlin Marathon is like right at Oktoberfest, which is like their beer hey. festival, you know, all sounds over Germany. Like, sounds so, like he yeah. can endure. <laughs> yeah. so you'll get good beer. The food was, uh, it was okay. It wasn't that great. Nothing. Mm. It's a city that I would never revisit. Put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. So, yeah. I, yeah, I got a yeah. few of those. So Tunde, you're a part of the um the Brooks Running Run Happy team. Yes. Yes. I saw that. What 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 does that entail? Um They so, hook you up with some free sneakers. What what, what do you get from yeah. Brooks? Uh well uh, we can start there. So I got so so far, um it runs like the calendar year, so January to January. And so far I've gotten two pairs of sneakers. Uh a lot of clothes. Um, I don't know. Okay. Like lots of shirts, <laughs> uh, tights, um, hats, pullovers, jackets, like the whole the whole nine. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you ever done like a sponsorship, but like basically they have like all the other people who are on the team. We have like our own Slack group where we where we uh, just talk about racing tips, just motivation, um, training tips. Um, they gave us all free entry to the Pittsburgh virtual um, marathon. Mm. So that's coming Pittsburgh. up in May. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's in person, I think, uh, limited, but virtual. So we're doing that with Brooks. Um, they're headquartered here in Seattle, so um, I think that's also part of the reason why I was selected. <laughs> Maybe, um, because I know I know a lot of people who work who work at Brooks. Mm -hmm. So, um, to be so honest, so you had it in. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> and to be honest, <laughs> before before I was selected, I was I wasn't the biggest Brooks person. Um, mm -hmm. uh, simply because I I have a neutral foot, so I can pretty much wear anything. So mm -hmm. before this, I was mostly running in Nike and New Balance. Um. But Brooks isn't like the shoes are really comfortable. Um, I will say that. So if you, you know, have you know feet problems while you're running, that's a good shoe to check out. Listen, I used to wear Brooks. Like Brooks was my thing, right? It's I. Uh -huh. I used to wear the Pure Connect, right? But they disconnected my sh discon disconnected discontinued the shoe, yeah. and after that, I was like, "Brooks, y'all dead to me." So, your your <laughs> your people at Brooks, you know, tell them hook the sister up if you have something comparable to the Pure Connect that they they probably uh, discontinued it like four or five years ago. Like right but now, God, I had them in every the flavor. They were my jam. The glitz ones are really comfortable. Um, maybe a little heavy, but mm. for comfort, for distance. I would say the glycerins, but if you're looking for to go fast, um, there's this shoe called the Hyperion Tempos. Those are really fast shoes, light and fast. Now, the only thing about Brooks is that, like, my feet wear, they have to look good. They have to be good and look good, and too. Why, Brooks be like, like Nike. Nope. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just saying that, like, aesthetics wise, oh. they have the best look. <laughs> Uh, don't don't um post this show on Instagram for they um, <laughs> uh, Wait, did, did you get those new um green? What are they? What color is that? I don't know what color. It's like lime, bright neon green alpha flies. Oh no, I didn't get those. No, I saw those. Those was clean though. <laughs> they, 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 they I saw those. I was like, what are these? Yeah, yeah. Those are hot. I, I would never wear those because I'm sponsored by Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> you can wear them you just can't post in them oh yeah for sure, for sure. <laughs> so you also have a podcast a summer 16 pod yes what do y'all yes. what do y'all talk about on there um some running um not too much uh but it's another member of um chase chasing roses also another one of our fraternity brother he's a co-host and we talk about mm -hmm. uh like I said, running, but um, just our everyday life, pop culture, a lot of politics, um, sports, and uh, music. So just a little bit of everything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we just passed our one-year anniversary as well. So. Nice. Congratulations. Appreciate you. 
Thank you. So you have your side pod, like I have a side pod too, where I do all of my cursing and all the, you know, the the, the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of that on there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's a whole bunch. <laughs> all the good stuff. We do all the good stuff over there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get into Chasing Roses. I love mm-hmm. that name. How did you come up with that? Um. So the the um the group first started in Portland, um, Oregon. So I used to run. This is when I was training for Miami. I used to run by myself in Portland, and Portland is even less diverse than Seattle is. And so I used to run by myself, and in, like in downtown Portland, and I would see like these groups of white people just running, but like together. And they look at they were having so much fun, and I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. That's what Portland needs. Like, just like a a run group. It doesn't have to be all black, but that's majority like you know people of color and, or black people. And I started. I went online, googled it. Of course, none existed. So I was like, you know, start our own. And then um, Portland is like nickname is the city of roses. So. That's where I started, like just ch- chasing roses, and um, I came from there. Um, yeah, so that's where the name came from. I didn't know Portland was called the City of Roses. Mm-hmm. So the the Seattle run scene. So if I was if if I visited Seattle, and I went outside for a run, <laughs> are the folks gonna be looking at me like? What is this brown girl doing in the rally uh, streets? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say now. Not now. Yeah. I think, yeah. I they, think they've they, seen us Wait, they woke, they woke now? Man, they've seen us enough, plus other people. I think it's just, especially with the pandemic and everybody getting outside, I think it's just expected now. Mm-hmm. So you, like the, the club has like a kind of unique mission. So what was like your your mission and who are you welcoming into your club um so i'm actually part i'm actually like i found a chasing roses so i'm actually also a part of another um another run club here in seattle um called csrd or chase or chase roses or club seattle runners division and Mm -hmm. um that that club is is like a like a, a neapolitan flavor of people just everyone it's it's black mm-hmm. it's white it's asian it's it's um it's just everyone and um during the pandemic um i think that we wanted something especially around the time that ahmaud arbery was was, was killed i think mm-hmm. we wanted a space of our own so like uh we would run and then like i remember that weekend, I was running around like a really popular lake here, um, uh, called Green Lake, and I and I saw like just people just out running or laying in the grass in the, in the sun, you know, um, and it seemed like it affected me because I was running. I was like, okay, this is something that could happen to me, or happen to Gary, or happen to happen to you, happen to anyone like us that looks like us, mm-hmm. and so. That whole weekend, as I ran, I was like so overcome with emotion because of looking around and seeing, you know, white people just frolicking around and not having a care in the world. And I went, I was wondering, do they even care, or did they yeah, even know? What would that feel like? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so before that, chasing Ro- chasing roses was like important. It was. We meet in person. We we um, we meet in person three times a week. We did short runs, long runs, track track Tuesdays, and then uh, Portland, like Seattle, is a very transient city. Um, there, black people move there for for jobs, basically, because um, like in Portland, there's Nike, there's Adidas, there's Intel. In Seattle, there's uh, Microsoft, Boeing, um, Google, Amazon, Google, mm-hmm. and so people come they stay like three or four years and they leave and so at that point i was like let's switch chasing roses to um in person as well as virtual so we can keep in contact with the people who come to seattle and then they end up leaving like for instance gary's 
in the Roses category now, but he's still a part of Chasing Roses. Um, mm-hmm. And we, we share runs uh, virtually, and um, and if he comes back in town, go for a run. Uh, we may later on this year try to schedule another race in a different city, and we'll all get together for a race, and we'll train together virtually, and we'll come together and race. So that's like kind of like the mission statement on who we're looking to target in Chasing Roses. And of course, white people so are welcome Gary. too. I don't want to make it seem like that, <laughs> that they can't come. As long as you're allied. You <laughs> yeah, as long as you're allied, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, you need to start a Chasing Roses. LA, well, not LA. What part of Cali are you in? The the Bay Area, up north. north Northern oh, California. San Fran? Okay, so you need to start yeah. Chasing Roses. The Bay Edition. North Cal? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's real. I mean, because I'll be honest with you, even since I've came back home, I've gotten in some runs with old teammates or just friends and everything like that. So it's just like what Tunde was saying, it's just a, a safe place, a, a place to get out. And I mean, you don't have to come and, and run 10 miles. You know, you we can do a 5K. We can do a couple of miles, whatever, you know, we, you kind of feel is, hey, whatever. It's just a place for us to get together. Sometimes or most of the time we have music. Uh, it's good runs. Hey, you know, we going at somebody else's pace. That's fine. Like we just wanted somewhere to get together and really, it's another form of fellowship in my eyes. So uh, that was the biggest piece for me. Yeah, but I'm serious because I I was looking for a run club to feature from the West Coast, and it's y'all mm. y'all are hard to find. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been looking for a minute. I I found maybe a handful, quite honestly. That you know that I thought would bring something to this show. Yeah, Cause I like to talk mm-hmm. to well, a well-rounded group. You know, you don't have to be black to be on this show. I know I have a lot of black folks on this show. I'm black. It just, <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, you know, when I visit the West coast, I want to have people to run with and we just don't have that many options. So it's, it's good that you yeah. guys are forming your own movement <clears throat> on the left coast. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, I thank God, you know, I met Tunde and he, like I told you before, all, all my running was short, short and sweet. And now I can get out there and really bus five, six miles and all right, what's next? You know? So it just, it's all about progression, uh, motivation, everything. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's I'm thankful. So how has the group pivoted during COVID? Were you guys running together the entire 2020 or what did you guys do? Well, we, uh, you want... no, oh, okay, I was going to say, we transitioned, uh, we were running uh, on Fridays as the group, and then like me and Tunde would uh, get a couple runs in during the week, uh, social distance running, stuff like that, I mean, we were masked up, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's still, we were still getting together and different things like that, but like, you know, it went from, we go run, you know, four or five, six miles, grab some beer and dinner to, you know, we just go, go run, and then all right, we'll see you next week, you know, or something like that. So it just, it, it like I said, it went from, you know, Tunde starting it for everybody in, in Seattle or from Portland to Seattle. Then we got together because we were actually training for uh, the Portland half. And then from there, it just, it kept developing to where we started out slow. And I mean, we started out real slow. And then it just built up to, <clears throat> I was going to go meet up with Tunde a couple times a week. I, I regret it going, but, you know, once we got there, we got going. It was always good. <laughs> And you know what? That's the story like of a lot of uh, there's been a lot a lot of new runners that have come out of this mm-hmm. pandemic because we didn't have nothing else to do. You know, running was like the only yeah. semi safe thing to do because y'all were hit pretty hard in the beginning. Right. Yeah. yeah yep. I think Seattle was the first city in the, in the in the country to get to get hit. And so, like, I think even now, as compared to other cities around the country, Seattle's still pretty locked down, like. Our movie theaters aren't open. Gyms just mm-hmm. opened up in March. Um, yeah, so we're yeah we're pretty pretty much been locked down. So like Gary said, that kind of took away the fellowship aspect of our runs because um, we we switched from Fridays to Saturdays, and uh, before then we was like meeting on Friday five oh sorry Friday six p.m. We'll run. We'll do three to whatever sometimes some people do 10 miles and then uh the rule is no one can leave until the last person comes back and then we all no take a one afterwards no unless you have an emergency i mean you have an emergency but like because like most people are gonna leave and go get food afterwards so mm-hmm. we so we meet um back at the top of the hill where we where we usually meet take take a picture and all go get food together 
um, so that there's a spot where we where we run it where there's outdoor seating, so that made it bearable during COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's dope because my run group they take the picture before everybody runs, <laughs> <laughs> and when, when I get back, I don't see nobody. They be like everybody's <laughs> good, so that's dope that y'all you know wait around for each other because my group. Well, don't we do we that. try not to. We try to be mindful <laughs> as well. So like if let's say Gary and I have to do like a a twelve mile run, we know that people are not going to sit around that long, so we'll get there a little mm-hmm. bit early and do mm-hmm. like maybe six miles of the twelve before. Everyone starts running, and then we'll do our, you know, six miles with the group. Mm-hmm. That's very considerate of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really understanding everybody's run level, run capacities, you know. So, just mm-hmm. like I said, it's a place for everybody to get together, and, and it, it's been great. You know, now mm-hmm. it's allowed me to continue running. I mean, we just did a hundred miles for March, so we have fifty this month, and you know, I'm going back to. 90% strength training, so just doing this 50 is going to be a challenge for this month, but, you know, it's all good. So when where, where do you guys meet on a weekly basis? Do you have, like, a set place? Do you move it around every week? Um, yeah, so th- the spot that we meet at most often is called Olympic Sculpture Park. So the, Seattle is one of those cities that's, like, right on the water, and so the spot where we meet is... Um, it's right on this part called Elliott Bay. And there's a bunch of statues there and you can be running right along Elliott Bay near where um, Expedia's headquarters is. And uh, yeah, so most people do an out and back three miles. And um, if you wanna go longer, you can, but that's where we meet, Olympic Sculpture Park. Okay. So but then we've also what? did what, yep. Green Lake and uh, what, Lake. Alki uh, Beach. Yep, so, so it's, it's a number of places, but yeah. Yeah. So what is, I know you have like an April run challenge going on within the group. What does that yes. entail? Um, so I just wanted something uh, to get people who might not uh, be into running as you know, everyone else to kind of like challenge themselves and push themselves. Because at first I thought, I was like, let me do a hundred mile challenge. I was like, not everyone's going to do a hundred miles. So I'm going to mm-hmm. like knock it back down to 50. Um, and uh, to get people to kind of join the, the Strava run group, that's one of the one of the rules to, to kind of be entered into the challenge. So the first is join the Strava run group and then log your miles through Strava. And then you can see, everyone can see everyone else's run on the on the group page. And then um, you have to follow uh, Jason Roses on Instagram. And then you have to follow Brooks Running because uh, Brooks is actually going to be um, giving away the, the shoes as one of the prizes. And then. Uh, Which shoes? I believe. Uh, the, I'll be gonna be the, one, one of the two shoes I mentioned. The Glycerin 19s, which just came out, mm-hmm. or the Hyperion Tempos. I don't know which one yet. Um, and then the other two, um, then the other person you have to follow is uh, is me. Uh, my personal Instagram. And the last one. Trying to get some followers up. He can add yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. And then summer 16, and summer 16 um, <clears throat> podcast page. And so, so that's I just need role. to follow summer 16. Cause I'm already following you and chasing yeah. roses. Join yeah. the Strava club. Oh, I got to yeah. follow Brooks. And then and run 50 miles. <laughs> she like, uh. <laughs> I guess yep. I can and follow then. Brooks for the rest of the month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a few days Wait. after the month. I follow. <laughs> they're, not, they're not gonna follow me back. So I might as well just unfollow yeah, them yeah, after. Yeah. Wait, so how so, do yeah, you pick the winner? So, yeah, so if you do that and then you run the 50 miles, uh, I'm actually going each day to the um, the Chasing Roses Strava page and mm-hmm. I have an Excel sheet where I am logging everyone's, I see ev- I see everyone's miles every day. And mm-hmm. everyone who who's run 50 miles at the end of the month and has, you know, um, and has followed the, the four counts will be entered into a raffle 
So, um, I like this way because people do Nike challenges and say whoever's the first one to win it wins the challenge. And I don't like yeah. that because not everyone can run like, you know, 50 miles for three days. So, everyone who runs the 50 miles has an equal chance of winning. And then there are three prizes. Um, so, I'm going to do like a like a auto-generated um, lottery. And then uh, the first prize, the grand prize is the shoes. And then the, the second two prizes are a $100 gift card to Brooks. So, they're going to be three prizes. There you go. So, 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 Brooks is very giving, huh? <laughs> well, they, they, they just gave the shoes. And the, who's giving the gift cards then? I am. Really? Profe- Professor Tunde. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very generous of you. Wait, so yeah. how many people are entered into this? Um, let me see if I have a chance. Uh, well, I won't know until the end of the month because it depends on who, who finishes their mouse. Mm-hmm. So if only three people finish their miles, then everyone wins. True. I don't. I don't like this Strava app. Oh, you know. <clears throat> what do you What do you normally use to track your miles? I mean, I use Garmin, and you know, it filters over to Strava. But Str- the app is just so antiquated. Oh, you must not. Look, have how do you even find How do you even find a club on this app? Um, you go to the club section. Yeah. Clubs no, and, and then you type there's in no club numbers. section on here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it should be right at the top, top right. Uh, following okay, you, so look, clubs. Look, no, no, no. So look, you have to go to explore, then clubs. <laughs> they don't make it easy. Chasing roses. Oh, here you are. Let me see if I have a chance before I join. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what they do with it, it, it. Oh, you have some people from Brooklyn in here. Okay. Atlanta. Portland. DC. Yeah. You you have a, yeah, a variety of folks in here. Okay, you're gonna have me too. There you Join. go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go follow Brooks. Who else I gotta follow? Oh, your pod page. Your pod page. <laughs> so what's up next for Chasing Roses? What do you guys have on the horizon? Um, so right now we are um, determining what half marathon we're gonna run later on this year. Um so last year we did Portland and, and it was good because the Portland half marathon was a, a OYO, which is on your own, where they pick one weekend and you can mm-hmm. basically start it's ch- it's still chipped and timed so you start whenever mm-hmm. you want to start and you, you can start at like 6 a.m or you can start at 10 a.m and then it encourages basically social <clears> distancing <throat> and then you run the course and it basically it's turn by turn directions in your air while you're running and then really you where to go yep. oh so they had their own app yep, mm-hmm. yep. oh that's and cool then, and so that that's <clears throat> what we did last year so this year we are thinking a lot of especially a lot of states in the south or maybe yeah in the south are going to be open with the open southeast but, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we, we're florida been uh, racing since like um, the 2020 they ain't yeah, they ain't, they, stop, they ain't okay? stopped okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna pick a half in um in october or probably yeah october maybe late september um where everyone's gonna start training for and we're gonna run that race and meet up there in the city. And the invitation is gonna be open for whoever wants to join us. South Carolina too, but I wouldn't recommend going to South Carolina. Right. <laughs> you also want a city that's fun. So like, yeah. not saying South Carolina South Car- isn't fun. South Carolina. Cause if, I, Cause if I'm running afterwards, I wanna have some fun, so. Yeah, yeah South Carolina, <laughs> at least Miami, they open. You can probably go to a bar, or, you know, whatever they have on South Beach, South Carolina. Mm. Yeah. But you know, not know. only Miami, Miami, like all of Florida is open. Mm-hmm. You could go mm-hmm. to Orlando, like you can go, and it, that's a good plan. Well, you Disney think World. a lot of people will travel with you to go to an out of state race? Yeah. Well, I hope, yeah. uh, I'll be vaccinated by then, so that'll make it a little bit more comfortable for me to get out there. Mm-hmm. You know, the um, the thirty and overs can get vaxxed now. I just got mine yeah. like Friday or something last week. Yeah, I'm getting okay, on the okay. 15th, I think. So I'm okay. excited about I'm, that. I'm glad y'all on, on the Vax train because everybody ain't on it. But you know what? 
because New York City Marathon has just sent something out about this year's race, and their requirements are a COVID, a negative COVID test, or a vaccine. That's good. So that's that, good. Yeah, I, I, I think it. that's going to be like for all races going forward. Now it's like going to be our new normal. I'll take it. Hey, mm-hmm. if you want to race, get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got some of us come up with something a little bit more catchier, but yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so was there anything else that you guys wanted to share with the Runwave audience about yourselves or about Chasing Roses? And what's up with that hoodie? I want that hoodie. Those are like oh, my two is, favorite colors, black is, and red. This is a limited edition uh, <laughs> Chasing Roses hoodie that we did. A, we did a collaboration with a, um, a run apparel company, a uh, black owned smart company called D17 running. And they mm-hmm. actually reached out to us when we were training for the Portland marathon. And they said, Oh, you know, we like what you're doing. Um, would you like if we sent like your crew some free gear? And so they sent us like a giant box of just free gear. So, um, wow. this, it's D17 running They're based in Maryland. So we've been supporting them ever since. And, mm-hmm. uh, we decided to do a collab. Black with them. So I wish I could show you the back. Yeah. Black owned. Yeah. So the back says D seventeen running on the back. Okay. Let us see the back tune there for the uh, audience viewers. Let's see. Okay. Wait, so they gave those to y'all? So where can we get that hoodie? <laughs> uh is it available still? No. Uh, well, we are going to be... How you going to wear it. something on the show that is not I even know, available? Like, know, who does I that? Know, I know. <laughs> it, it what about that runway hoodie? That hoodie is hard, too. This, this available. You could get this. See, I don't wear stuff as a stock, okay? You can all get right, this. It's right. available. Runwave.com right. slash shop. It's available. Say <laughs> less. What, Say what less. happened was, we didn't know like, <laughs> what had happened was buy these, these hoodies. So we said, uh-huh. let's, let's go ahead and make 50. And uh-huh. just what happens, the 50 sold out, like, I think in a couple of days. So <laughs> that was that was it. So we're going to try to make other things outside the hoodie, maybe shirts or tanks as well. So, Well, get the restart going. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to Tell her, how long? How long? <laughs> 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 we, we we need that restock day. You can't be coming on the show wearing fly stuff and we can't get it. Like, uh, come on. That's, that's my bad. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Seventeen, come through with the restock. We we said it Man. here. Heard it here All first. Right. So I want to thank you, fellas, for being on the Runway podcast. I was so happy to be able to have a West Coast crew on the show because y'all are hard to come by and I'm happy that I found you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everybody where we can find you on socials. Uh, I'm on social media, IG uh, at GB Beaston, B-E-A-S-T-I-N. That's my personal page. And also we have the Chase and Roses page. Mm-hmm. So the Chase and, and Roses page? Go ahead. Oh, mm-hmm. sorry. Chase and Roses page is uh, Chase and Roses RC. Uh, so Chase Moses Run Club. Mm-hmm. And where do you guys communicate as a group? Do you have like a Facebook uh, page? Do you, you what do tab? Have How page. do y'all communicate? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but we don't communicate through Facebook because I, I don't know. I feel like Facebook is for our parents. Old. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot. A lot of runs get tagged on IG. That's what that definitely yeah. happens. Yeah, and then we also communicate a lot through text as well. Like we have text groups. Listen, my mom is on Facebook every day. So when I saw that, I was like, it's time for me to pull back from Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom was just complaining. They, they locked her out of Facebook. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what? It's like the, the old people playground now. Like, what happened oh, to man. Facebook? Wait, for so real. y'all text as a group? When y'all have group runs, you post it in a text? Or on the Strava page, too. We yeah. use the Strava page a lot. Okay, so, like, good, on Strava, good. under the club page, there's a, basically an announcement section in there as well. And, mm-hmm. I guess, um, a message board. But also, if you follow it, it's, it's on like Strava. in the groups. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then if you, you follow any of us on IG, like yeah, <laughs> on IG, we post, <laughs> we post the runs and everything like that. Locations, times. 
Okay, nice. So the next time, if I ever get to Seattle, whenever the when, world opens back when, up, when, yeah. when, when, because I'm going to get there eventually. Hopefully, mm-hmm. two and day doesn't move. Are you within your four-year moving period yet? It's, get, it's getting there. <laughs> no, it's, it's getting there. there. <laughs> it's getting there. Hopefully, when I finally get to Seattle, you'll still be there. Maybe. Wait, so you're, I know L.A. was closed. What is it like in um Northern California? Are you all like... Uh, slowly, slowly, but surely opening up. I know a lot of places are like, uh, outside dining and di- different things like that. But, uh, I just went to a restaurant the other day and it was like, you know, every other table. So they're still practicing a lot of social distancing and everything like that. Yeah. Cause I was trying to like do a, a quick trip to LA and then I saw they had a 10 day quarantine. And I was like, eh, that's not happening. Oh, no, I think that's, <laughs> that's been lifted since then. Cause I, I just flew down to LA for work and I didn't have to quarantine. No, I just looked two days ago. Yesterday, two days ago, and I think I, I you know like what? There's what they put it out there, but no one really actually yeah. does it. Yeah, I was I was literally just in LA, and it was no quarantine. Oh, so maybe that's back on. Because you know what? New York had the 14 day quarantine, but the form you could put like Mickey Mouse on the form. They weren't, they weren't <laughs> even paying attention to that. But yeah. Oh, all right. I need to look into that. So maybe mm-hmm. that maybe I can visit LA. Shh. I'm going to edit all of that out. (laughs) We ain't going to play none of that. We ain't going to edit all that. (laughs) There you go. There you go. Yeah. But Gary and Tunde, I want to thank you guys for being on the Runway Podcast. I will leave all of your socials down below. All of the Run Clubs and everybody else will start following you now. I'm going to guarantee that. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, it was a pleasure having you guys on. Thank you for having Well, hey, I appreciate you having us, for real. Of course. And Mr. Biology. Wish you nothing but success in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. And um, hoping people listen to this, they're going to be like a biology professor. Your DM's going to be lit. (laughs) Pop it. Hey, pop it. (laughs) Pop it. All right. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Gary and Tunde of Chasing Roses Run Club. I will leave all of their details down below so you can follow them on Instagram. You can join their Strava Run Club. And don't forget to join their 50 mile challenge for the month of April. You can wear, win a pair of Brooks running shoes and you can win a $100 gift card from Brooks Running as well. So you have three chances to win a prize for their April 50 mile run challenge so thank you again for tuning into this episode of the runway podcast i'll have a brand new run crew on the show next week and i will catch y'all on the next one later thank you so much for tuning into the show be sure to subscribe to the runway on your favorite podcast app and leave us a review of the show on apple Podcasts. it would really help me out if you are a runner that has a story to tell and you would like to be on the show you can email hello at the runwave.com or send us a dm on instagram to the run wave see you next time Yeah.